Okay, so you're looking to learn printed circuit board design. Well, after having spent eight years to learn it and eventually getting a hardware engineer role at Intel, then I have discovered a number of secrets. I've studied under a lot of mentors, read a lot of books, PDFs, webinars, and courses, and this is the path that I use to get the fastest results possible in becoming proficient at pinet circuit board design. So don't do it the long way like I did. Do it the shorter path and the way that I've been using to help my students succeed in four and a half months, not four and a half years. Okay, so we're just going to cut straight to it. Well, why would you want to learn PCB design in the first place as an electrical engineer? Well, it's actually in really high demand right now, and companies are not able to find people who have the PCB design skills to get the job done. All right, so this is this is a role that's paying top dollar and it'd be easy to fill the role if you actually have the skills, but having the skills is a huge problem. I've been talking to industry recruiters, companies, companies even like Apple who are still looking for PCB designers, but they just don't know. It's because it's a really hard skill. It's not taught in university and you know, it's, it's just really hard to do now. Companies are paying top dollar for this, especially in the Bay Area, California, USA. That's 130K to $140 dollars per year in some op opportunities or some jobs. You have 100% paid coverage, and so you get benefits on top of that. You have associate engineer, PCB layout and engineering. That's paying a median of 96000 on the salary there. Okay, so it's paying decent money if you want to become a PCB designer. And um, also, PCB design has limitless career options. You can go into aeronautics, consumer electronics, robotics. You can make your own products and sell those. So it's really invaluable across many different fields. It also lets you explore your creativity and innovations. So you can invent things. You can make your own hardware products, like I mentioned before. And it's just really rewarding and satisfying when you make a product that actually works. OK, and being able to get a lot of money and the fact that like it's not being taught at university, which I'll get into a bit later. It's just it's a really good position. And finally, if you want something that will challenge you and use all 100 percent of your undergraduate or bachelor's degree or even master's or Ph.D., PCB design is the way to go. All right. So let's talk a little bit about how I even got to learn PCB design and some of my journey. So what's my story, right? You know, I was an electrical engineering student and I found PCBs pretty fascinating. I mean, I did have other passions like artificial intelligence, data science and all that stuff. So those are definitely always my true passion. But PCDs were still really cool, especially since I had some invention ideas that I wanted to make and to be able to make it with my own hands. But I just didn't know what this, you know, I didn't know anything. Universities didn't teach us anything with PCB design. And that's a major problem with universities and even in industry. We do not learn the skills we need PCB design to even get in industry. And even when you're in industry, you still have to find additional resources to actually learn printed circuit board design. So um, I had worked eventually as a power systems engineer coming out of school, an adjunct professor, hardware engineer, and I even taught others little tips and tricks I knew about PCB design, but things were off, things were missing. It took me way too long to eventually learn PCB design, and I ended up working as a hardware engineer at Intel. And I was like, yo, this is way too long. So um, it was the confusing learning curve. I didn't know where all the information was. It just took too long. So then I had a breakthrough, right? I ended up eventually reverse engineering my own learning process and figuring out how to teach people PCB design faster and more effectively. And after testing that and refining my methods, like here on my website, a so full people would enroll in my course, uh, companies would, would enroll their employees in my program. I was starting to see crazy results. Like people were grasping stuff, the concepts really fast and they were landing their dream hardware jobs in like four and a half months not the four five six years it took me to get my first pcb design role okay so how do we achieve this how did i how did it, this happen well i'm going to show you that right now here's how you can fast track your success in learning pcb design in 2024 it's not just about you know finding the right software tools or anything like that and speaking of software tools if you 
um, are on the fence about what software tool to use, then Altium is one of the most professional and user-friendly tools that you can for print and circuit board design. If you want a free trial to Altium or like a discount or anything, check the link in the description below. Use that link. That's going to get you the discount and, and or the free trial. Okay. So a little thing there. So now let's talk about the learning path to explain this properly. We have signal integrity. Okay. This is the thing. If you don't know anything about signal integrity and you're just new to this, you will be like, well, what's signal integrity? Well, that's basically dealing with, um, the signals on your board. Your board is managing electromagnetic fields. And this is absolutely crucial, a critical foundation for signal, for signal integrity, whether you're on a budget or you're willing to spend some money, then I highly recommend the signal integrity ebook from Sierra circuits. It's free to download and the link is here and I'll, I'll leave the link to this dashboard or presentation in the description below, right? After you learn signal integrity, you may want to do a project in some like online course. You know, there are free courses online on uh, YouTube and other places online where you can, with this higher understanding of signal integrity, you do, you do with that design, with that awareness, the courses may not teach signal integrity in the PCB design, but at least you'll have this awareness. Then you have, you know, if you want to go really, really super in depth, the bug Addon's practical guide to super to transmission lines. And this is really good. Once you do this, you might want to do another design. Again, it most likely won't teach signal integrity with the courses that are out there and everything. But there are a number of courses like those on Udemy. Here, I have a course down here where I teach Cadence or CAD. The next thing here is the once you've learned signal integrity, the next thing you want to know is uh, EMI. So signal integrity, knowing this allows you to manipulate and route the traces on your board properly to avoid signal degradation and things of that nature, because a bad PCB layout can ruin an otherwise correct electrical design. The next thing here we have is EMI and EMC. You want to uh, get resources for these. This one's really good. Get EMC design right the first time. And I have a nice video. So it's a free ebook you put in your email and get the download for. Then after you do this, I recommend doing some kind of course, doing another PCB that's a little harder, or maybe even the same PCB with, but within the lens of, or mindset of managing EMC. And how do you solve and manage EMC is all about the PCB stack up. All right. So we're here talking about the traces and how you position them and the space between them. This is how you manage the PCB stack up and how you use your layers and everything. If you want a more in-depth book that's paid, this is a popular book that I really like PCB design and layout fundamentals for EMC. And maybe you want to do a more complex design. After that, once you have signal integrity and stack up understood properly, now you're ready for high speed digital design. This is a different ball game altogether because you're here, you're dealing with the two vectors or two sides of a field, or maybe two perspectives of a field. Um, and that is the electromagnetic field and the, like Lorentz factors and everything. Basically they're the same field. It's just depending on the time or, uh, the way you're perceiving the field, one may look like a magnetic field and one may look like an electric field, but they're the same, they're the same source or entity. Anyway, so this handles more so the magnetic field and how it behaves and getting this foundation handles the electric field and how it behaves, understanding EMC and EMI. Then high speed digital design has to do with time, timing and with high speed signals or really fast signals that are pushing lots of data. They have to match in their timing and all of this rides on top of understanding signal integrity and EMI very, very, very well. Okay. Now you have a free guide from Sierra circuits. Again, I love their guides, high speed design guide. This is what I learn and teach with. And then of course, you know, this is the, the popular one, high speed digital design, a handbook of black magic. Um, so now, oh, and there's another book by Dr. Eric Bogatin. I'll link that in here as well that I forgot to put in here, which is the OG, the signal and power integrity simplified book. Okay. Then after that, you need to know the PCB design process. Uh, I will an industry more. So the high level overview of what's going on in industry, what are PCB design standards? What's the JDEC standard? 
where what's IPC you need to know all this stuff so I have a free resource here from the IPC directly and it covers everything okay every all the big players in, inside the PCB design you need to be aware of that then you need to uh, get this book right here complete PCB design using ORCID capture and PCB editor don't worry about the software that it's in um, make sure you read through this book from front to back multiple times because this is essentially like the PCB design Bible as far as the full scope JDEC standards assembly uh, test everything is in here okay and in a practical way that's easy to digest including signal integrity and PCB stackups so now you're getting a uh, repetition a sort of space repetition a sort of reminders on things you would have learned from these guides and books right and it has four projects that you can do if you happen to you know get the ORCAD software the next thing is the PCB design process more, more focusing on the process and less on the industry and process you have this free guide hitchhiker's guide to pcb design highly recommended i use this for my students when i teach pcb design at the rochester institute of technology amazing fantastic book in only like what fewer than 100 pages i want to say so you can get the paid hardback copy if you want online it's really good and it also mentions the standards you need to be aware of now uh, after you've done all these and ideally you would have done a project or two projects for each of these guides and books that you read through to bake in that knowledge and to at least be design aware, you know, taking online courses wherever you can take them, then you want to start looking at reference designs. Reference designs from like Texas Instruments and whatnot, they are not always correct, okay? So you need to go in ready to be able to spot things and this is how you build your base your foundation by the time you get to designs you want to be able to modify them you can do that effectively by getting your foundations first and then going into reference designs now how can you learn fast maybe it's like hey Kirsch, this is, looks like it would take a lot of time well you know if you're diligent with it five to ten hours per week for like two years um or maybe shorter then you can you can totally do this or uh, and take a lot of notes it depends on how much time you want to dedicate uh, per weekend or per week okay but to learn fast i would strongly recommend the ultra learning book this is a book that i picked up um although really i'm a natural ultra learner so this book was created by scott young who studied natural ultra learners and then he noticed the pattern that uh nine things that we all ultra learners tend to do naturally for most people this works and here's my website i've been able to you know completely change people's lives their trajectory they were working at in jobs that were not serving them were not taking advantage of their full potential in electrical engineering so i'm um, glad i reverse engineered the pcb design learning process and this thing works like magic okay you do the work it's a lot of work and this is only pcb design all right this is not full stack hardware engineering uh, but you will dip into that going through this process but if you want to become an expert pcb designer this is you know kind of the way to go all right and then you would tack on your industry standards your ipc standards and everything like that okay so you have the skills to be a PCB designer after following the path that I gave you, right? It, it bakes it all in there. But what about the best PCB design software? Well, it depends on your situation. If you're going into enterprise, you're going to want to learn either Altium Designer or Cadence Allegro, okay? So Altium and Cadence Allegro, the difference between them is pretty much geographic. If you're in, say, the UK or uh, in certain countries, in Australia or wherever, wherever it is an abundance of Altium, go with Altium. If you are in certain states, in the United States or certain cities, where like certain areas in the Bay Area, you, you're going to need to know either Altium or Cadence Allegro. And in certain other countries or certain parts of the U.S., you're going to need to know Cadence Allegro. It's just how it is. So to know the real answer, you need to check Glassdoor on other websites. For the job descriptions, that's the secret. Check the job descriptions in your area and see what the hiring managers and the companies are using. Also, companies switch between these two software all the time. 
depending on their needs. And sometimes they even have both. So it really depends on your location. Okay. The younger brother to Allegro is Orcad. This is for the individual professional. Orcad X, you know, Orcad X is the new one that has come out recently and it's a bit more streamlined in terms of the user interface and experience. Okay. So try this out if you want to learn a similar environment or ecosystem as Allegro without having to spend a bunch of money for a team and using this as an individual. Now, next is Altium Designer. Same case with Altium. You have Altium Enterprise, Altium 365 is available, and as Altium Professional. Depending on your need and use case and the company you're working at, you'll need to know Altium, okay? And then let's say you don't have a budget for the Altium suite necessarily, like then you want to go with Altium Circuit Studio because it's close enough to Altium, you could work your way up to there. So these are team software, Allegro and Altium, whereas Orcad and Altium Circuit Studio are more for individual, although both can be used for, both, both the enterprise can be used for individuals as well. It just depends on what your budget and demands are. Now, if you want to go the free route, there's no free option for any of the Allegro products except for a free trial. However, you do get a free tool called Altium Circuit Maker if you want to still be in the Altium ecosystem and be able to design your boards for free. So this is very cool, very convenient. And uh, it has a very similar interface to Altium as well. So of course, it's made by Altium. So this is a good free option to go with. The next third big player in industry, these are the big three, Allegro, Altium, and uh, Siemens Expedition. You have this Expedition, Expedition Enterprise. This used to be owned by Mentor Graphics. Mentor Graphics got bought by Siemens. So now it's Siemens Expedition Enterprise. And this is what you would see in space explorations and whatnot. A lot of consumer electronics you would see in Allegro and then Altium would be in aeronautics, uh, uh, and, and space as well. So it really just depends on location and use case. It, it really, you have to check the job descriptions to know which one to use, to which ones to learn. Then you have the little sibling to Expedition, which is PADS PCB design software. Uh, people you'd hear it called PADS professional. It just depends. You have um, pretty much same features as any other professional individual PCB design software or tool. You're going to need to know this depending on the job as well. Now, regardless of what role you do in hardware engineering and design, you need to learn LT Spice at some point to run circuit simulations if you're on the design side or want to understand the design side and simulation. LT Spice also has an amazing simulator, very fast for a lot of applications. Okay. And then you have finally, of course, I got to mention the KiCad. It doesn't have as many convenient options as there are in the more you know the paid software or anything but if you're on a budget you don't want to spend any money it's a good tool to learn as well okay just know that for the most part you're not going to see any software on job descriptions that companies are hiring for unless unless it's like allegro altium or expedition sometimes pads you'll see you, you'll see it I haven't seen it as often, quite honestly. So, okay. Now, how do you learn all this? Well, to get a full path, if you want mentorship, check out hasofu.com and check out academy.hasofu.com where we have courses and mentorship programs. Everything that you see on the page is not everything that's available, okay? Definitely inquire. Kirsch at hasofu.com. Just email me. You can also email me at tech at kirsch at gmail.com, but hit me up at Karshadhasofu.com. Okay. Even if you don't enroll, that's fine. Or don't contact, that's fine. Follow the path I gave you. You will drastically improve your results, your skill level, and it just takes out of it takes it cuts through all the noise, the PCB path I showed you to become a skilled uh, 